Thanks for watching THP 11 News at noon. We're glad you're here with us. We want to start here with developing news from Afghanistan. American forces are among the casualties from an attack in Kabul. This comes as the U.S. works to get American citizens and Afghan allies out of the country before the deadline to complete the withdrawal. Steve Dorsey has the very latest from the White House. Multiple explosions and gunfire were reported outside the airport in Kabul, Afghanistan. Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby tweeted, quote, the explosion at the Abbey Gate was the result of a complex attack that resulted in a number of U.S. and civilian casualties. We can also confirm at least one other explosion at or near the Baron Hotel, a short distance from Abbey Gate. There had been intelligence reports of a possible attack with the State Department issuing a warning overnight for Americans to stay away from the airport. President Biden was briefed on the attack as he met with his National Security Council this morning. It remains to be seen what kind of impact this will have on efforts to evacuate the estimated 1,500 Americans or the tens of thousands of Afghan allies before the August 31st deadline. Our commitment in this country and our involvement in this country is, doesn't end on that date. Uh, we believe that there will be, uh, there will be uh, possibilities uh, for Americans to be able to get out of this country. But critics on Capitol Hill are skeptical and are calling on the president to keep American forces there until the last person is safely out. This isn't about Republican or Democrats, it's about America and it's about the expectation of what the American handshake means to those that were willing to put their lives at risk to be able to help us and our service members and our diplomats on the ground. CBS News has confirmed two more lawmakers tried to make it into Kabul to see the situation for themselves, but their plane was not allowed to land. Steve Dorsey, CBS News, the White House. Again, this is a developing situation that will continue uh, to follow throughout the afternoon. Stay with us here on THV 11 and THV 11.com for the very latest on this situation. Also developing this afternoon, Nathan is watching the tropics. Nathan. Michael, we've been talking about this group of storms in the southeastern Caribbean Sea that is expected to develop and now it has turned into a tropical depression. It will most likely be a tropical storm in the next 12 hours or so. Still moving through Jamaica, but it's bearing its way off to the north and northwest, and we could see effects from that system going into next week. I'll have more details on that in the full weather cast. Today, though, it's going to be another hot one. Temperatures already feeling like above 100 degrees across most of central Arkansas. Heat advisories have been trimmed down into south Arkansas and east Arkansas. Here's a visible satellite, a mixture of sun and clouds. Temperatures right now into the low, even mid 90s for you folks in Pine Bluff. The radar loop is quiet at this time, but just like yesterday, I can't rule out the potential of an isolated to stray pop up shower or storm. Highs today topping out into the mid to upper 90s under partly cloudy skies. There is a little bit of heat relief coming up in my forecast. I'll have more on that a little bit later. Now we want to get to the latest on COVID-19 in Arkansas. The latest surge in new COVID cases here in the state appears to be leveling off. You can see that uh, right here on this graph. And these are our new daily case numbers dating back to April. Rather, that is the average. And as you can see, our numbers started to climb in July. And with them, our 14-day 14 14-day moving average also climbed. But if you look very closely, it's now on a slight downward trend. Here are the latest numbers. 2,781 new cases of the virus were reported yesterday. That jump caused our total active cases to go up a bit. Right now, 23,587 Arkansans are fighting COVID-19 and more than 1,300 of them are battling it in the hospital. Meanwhile, another 25 people have died from complications of the virus. A judge is preparing to hear arguments in a lawsuit aimed at ending Cabot School District's mask mandate. A group of parents is asking a judge to throw out the rule that was put in place after a Little Rock judge blocked a state law banning mask mandates across the state. That hearing is set for 1 o'clock this afternoon. We have a reporter there, and we'll have the very latest for you tonight at 5 and 6. We've received several questions from you about why there are so many COVID-19 cases in our schools, but none have been labeled as outbreaks. THV 11's Ashley Godwin did some digging and found out how one of our largest school districts is working to make sure students and staff stay safe. Technically, what defines an outbreak within a specific group of people is they spread it to each other. They didn't get it from 
uh, somewhere else. The Arkansas Department of Health's latest COVID numbers for schools shows there are more than 1,800 active cases. There have been more than 3,000 total cases since the start of school. The Department of Health says these cases are not considered outbreaks because they were not traced back to spread on campus. Instead, they believe these cases came from outside the classroom. Often we'll have maybe maybe a few cases even within a classroom, but when you investigate, oh, that person's mom was positive or that person was with their cousin over the weekend who turned out to be positive. The Little Rock School District, one of the largest districts in the state, reported more than 500 staff and students quarantined and more than 100 positive cases since the start of school last week. None of them outbreaks. We prefer not to have any cases, but I think we're managing things pretty well. And again, that's a tribute to student staff and parents all doing the right thing. LRSD has had to pivot some classes to virtual because of positive cases, more of those being from younger students, ages that can't get vaccinated yet. We're finding that um, we're having a higher rate of positive cases amongst the uh, students that are in our elementary and our pre-K more so than secondary. LRSD implemented a mask mandate after a federal judge blocked the statewide ban earlier this month, which the superintendent says has helped tremendously. ADE guidelines state that students who had close contact with a positive case do not have to quarantine as long as they have no symptoms and both were wearing masks. If we didn't have that, we would be quarantining huge number of people. In Little Rock, Ashley Godwin, THV 11 News. All right, and here's another concern popping up as students return to the classroom, high school sports. Last year, the Department of Health had mandates in place for participants and fans. Those are now just guidelines and the prevention methods vary among school districts. Dr. Joel Tumlison, who you heard from right there in that story, he's an outbreak response physician with ADH, and he says that the agency is working closely with school districts across the state, and he's not been made aware of any major outbreaks within sports teams, so some good news there. But one thing going for us this school year, he says, vaccines. Well, hopefully, if you get a team that has a large percentage of those uh, kids vaccinated, obviously that's gonna be more for junior high and high school teams we've been talking about there. Uh, hopefully then that will limit the effect of any positive cases within that team. One of the biggest high school football games of the year, the Salt Bowl, is this Saturday at War Memorial Stadium. Organizers tell us that masks will not be required. However, Johnson & Johnson vaccines will be available for those 18 and older from 2 until 7 o'clock on the east side of the stadium. Speaking of vaccines, Oakland Racing Casino Resort is now incentivizing employees to get their shot. It is raising the minimum wage of non-tipped employees to $16 an hour and $8.50 for an hour for employees who are tipped. Salary team members, they'll get a 3% increase if they're fully vaccinated with the new beginning starting salary of $40,000 per year. You can learn more about this change right now on THV11.com. Health officials hope with the FDA approved Pfizer vaccine, those who've been reluctant to get the shot will roll up their sleeves. Doctors are stepping up outreach to communities of color who have been disproportionately impacted by the coronavirus, and that includes Latinos. Vaccination rates among the Latinx community have lagged with the CDC reporting a little more than 33% fully vaccinated. Natalie Brand has more on the efforts. Community health provider Alexandra Moran doesn't like to take no for an answer. She knows that convincing people to get the COVID-19 vaccine may take more than one try. She understands the power of meeting people where they are, whether in a passing car or at the corner snack stand. Moran, who is a doctor licensed in Ecuador, has a specific mission. Mira, mira, lo de los embarazadas. Eso te digo porque es mentira. To get as many people as possible vaccinated in her community. Here, here, vaccines. It's my population. <laughs> I feel at home with them and have been hit so hard. CDC data shows Latino adults are almost twice as likely as white adults to contract the virus and more than twice as likely to die from it. Latinos have been getting vaccinated at a lower rate, according to the group Salud America, which tracks individual state numbers. I think the main reason is work-related. 
I think, unfortunately, there are not enough clinics in the evening. That's why this pop-up clinic run by Maryland-based Luminous Health opens later to catch the evening rush. He waited so long because he was hesitant because of all the misinformation and side effects. She changed her mind because she is expecting. Constantly on the move, Moran knows it's one of the secrets to her success. Remember Elsie Serón? She mentioned breakthrough cases. What do you say? The probability of that happening is very low. And even if that happens, the importance of getting vaccinated is for you not to end up in the ICU. A couple hours later, she decided to come inside for her first shot. <laughs> Moran says Serón was one of 39 vaccinations administered on this day, people arming themselves with protection against this ongoing pandemic. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Hyattsville, Maryland. If you'd like to learn more about the vaccine or where to get one, just grab your phone, text the word vaccine to 501-376-1111. We'll respond with a link to those resources. Nathan.